often get asked to make a video about the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders that you might have seen in the background of some of my other videos. So here it is. I'd like to mention though, I'm very much an amateur when it comes to this, so you might want to seek out some more professional information elsewhere on the internet, but I'm just going to try and point out some of the things that you might want to look out for if you want to buy one of these yourself. Now the first machine I got hold of was the Philips N4414. The only reason I got this was to make the intro that you see at the beginning of all my videos. I just sort of picked it up cheap. Uh, once I got hold of it, put some decent reels on, these nice looking 7 inch reels. I would started to realise that I'd actually like one of these, a better one than this. This one's alright. It's got a smoke plastic lid, a handle to pick it up with if you're particularly strong, built-in speakers. As I say, it takes a maximum of a 7-inch reel, uh, which is a pretty decent size, but there are bigger ones. I'll show you that in a second. All the buttons and sort of switch gear and stuff, pretty clunky on this. Kind of machine that people in the mid-1970s might have had in their house to record off the radio or the television. That's a 5 inch reel on the left, 7 inch reel on the right, and then this is a 10.5 inch reel. Once you see a 10.5 inch reel, you realise that you want a machine that actually plays those instead, because that would look pretty damn cool. So I went and got a TIAC A3440. This is a 10.5 inch reel machine, and that's the only reason I got it. I didn't know an awful lot about these at the time, and I learned that this is really a home recording device for a small studio recording device. You can see the four VU meters at the bottom there. It means you can layer up four tracks on a tape. They all record in the same direction, and therefore you can have like drums and a singer, guitar, that kind of thing. You get the idea where these came from. The remote control that I got with it came from Brighton Polytechnic Music Department. So that's the kind of place that those would exist in the UK at the time. Now mine was pretty beat up. I spent quite a bit of time repairing it. It was uh, learning about the machine as I was going along. For example, I learned that the uh, belts on these old ones perish like this, turn to sort of gluey stuff. You have to take them out and replace them if you can find a replacement. I also found that this had uh, stuck this part because of the uh, lubricant turning solid. Um, I didn't manage to fix this braking issue though. Every now and then the solenoid doesn't work on the brake and it means that the tape all spills out and it does snap tape. So I stopped using it, and besides, it doesn't let you play back pre-recorded albums properly because the tracks are laid out differently on those. Uh, so I went looking for another one. Now, if you look on eBay, which is what I did at the time, you can see that they're very expensive. I mean, a lot more expensive than you'd expect for something that sort of was from the 1970s. Probably more expensive now than when they were new, some of these. This is a GX635, close to a thousand pounds. This is a Sony TC765, very nice machine, but £1,400. Now these are UK prices, a lot cheaper if you're in the US, uh, considerably cheaper because there's an awful lot more of them for sale over there. Now if you want to save a bit of money and space, there are some decent 7-inch machines out there. The Akai GX77 is a nice looking one with a sophisticated tape loading mechanism. And the Pioneer RT707 looks very nice as well with its big VU meters. But I wanted a nice big ten and a half inch capable machine as you can see very expensive on ebay at the moment when i got mine a little bit cheaper and i imported it from germany there seem to be an awful lot more high-end machines that have survived over in germany and of course in the uk you don't pay any import duty getting them in the eu so that might be an idea now the machine i've got is an akai gx625 I really like the look of this machine and that's why I've picked this one. Uh, I like the way that the uh, number counter in the middle there counts up with digital digits rather than the analogue ones. Reminds me of the start of the six million dollar man when he starts running up to 65 miles an hour. Notice above the buttons on the right there it mentions that it's direct drive and that's a good thing because it means there's no belt inside the machine to perish. The digits on this could also display the elapsed time as a real time rather than just numbers as well. I like these buttons especially, I've mentioned this in a previous video, the way they light up when you press them. That was a thing that particularly attracted me to this machine and one that's almost unique to this one. Uh, remind me of the NASA consoles for launching uh, rockets. The big VU meters as well. I like big VU meters with needles on them like this bouncing around rather than the LED VU meters of the sort of 1980s. I think these are a lot more classy. And of course you've got this switch gear here, the typical switch gear you get on a late 1970s, early 1980s piece of hi-fi equipment. Just the period that I really like where everything seems to work really well but it also looks very well made and it's classy. Now I'll show you how the tape goes, it goes around that tension arm there, under 
that sort of drive wheel thing there that spins around uh, comes down at the bottom here I'll take this off so you can see the heads it goes first off across the erase head then the record head and then the playback head, as you can see clearly marked there that means you can record something and then play it back just after so you can monitor it and see that it's recording properly very good sound quality on this by the way um, that is the uh, pinch wheel there and the capstan I think I've got these things right as I say no expert tape goes around there over and above there now, the thing is tapes load differently on some machines to others but you kind of get the idea this start a little left go across on the right and you have to uh, spool it all up manually that's what a seven inch reel looks like by the way just clips on there ten and a half inch there's a big gap in the middle you can't just put them onto the reel you have to use an adapter and these things are called nab adapters and you'll need one of these if you get a ten and a half inch machine now those just go on there where the reel would normally go and you sort of lock that in place and then you put the, the big 10.5 inch reel on that. Those aren't cheap, in fact nothing is cheap. These are crazy prices, 60 odd pounds and upwards for second hand NAB adapters. But that's the price that the market's prepared to pay and you'll need them if you're going to be playing 10.5 inch reels. Now I'll show you how you thread one of these round on here just quickly. You have to do it sort of manually like this, spin the wheel on the left, get it round on the right, and it attaches and goes round the reel on the right and holds on there purely by friction, by running it round a few times. The idea is you don't attach it to it or clip it to it because when you rewind it you want it to come off that reel and go completely on the one on the left. Now even though I bought this because it looks cool, it has to work and that was an important thing for me and it does work really well. You'll also need some blank tape if you're going to be recording on one of these. Now the reels I've got here, XBBC stock, brand new, 2400 foot long, quarter inch tape. That'll get you 65 minutes on each side at 7.5 inches per second or 130 at 3.75 inches per second. Now there's only one place in the world that still seems to be selling these and it's these people. They're in the US. $65 for one of those blank reels. Of course, you can reuse them, but uh, new ones, $65. If you want to really throw your money away, go and get yourself one of these remote controls. Just look at the price of that wide remote controls for these things. I managed to get a cheaper remote control from a different model, um, which doesn't quite work perfectly. That record button behind that door won't start my recording, but I can play, stop, fast forward, rewind. Now, if you're starting to think that a reel-to-reel -reel machine is a bit of a money pit, well, you're not wrong. For example, if you want to get some pre-recorded albums, you can find those on eBay as well. Most of them date back to the mid-1960s. There's very few after that period. And the kind of stuff you find isn't particularly interesting either. Anything decent costs a heck of a lot of money into the hundreds of pounds. And that's because at the height of these things' popularity in the mid-1960s, the kind of person that would own a big reel-to-reel -reel machine would be someone that was very wealthy. So just imagine what a rich old chap would be buying in the mid-1960s. It's probably not the kind of stuff you want to listen to now. A lot of classical music, stuff from films and shows. Now, the type of recordings you can get, there's two different ones. Three and three quarter inches per second speed on the tape, which is the cheaper of the two usually, or the less high quality anyway. And then there's a seven and a half inches per second. Some albums are available in both, but generally you'll find a lot more three and three quarters than you will seven and a half because it uses less tape, so therefore it'd be cheaper to mass produce. That's a five inch reel on the right. This is uh, an album on a seven inch reel, and it's one that's been recorded at seven and a half inches per second. That logo there with the four on it, that's a good diagram to show you how the tracks are laid out. The stereo left and right tracks going in both directions, and it's on each side of the tape. Now, this album that I got, this Aretha Franklin album, excellent album, but it's only recorded at three and three quarter inches per second, but that's the only one that they did, I think. It still sounds really good, though. It's not terrible. Remember, the tape on these is twice the width of a normal compact cassette, and also the tape runs at twice the speed of a compact cassette, so it's going to sound better than that to start with anyway. And then seven and a half inches per second sounds even better than that. Now, for some reason, I managed to find this Lionel Richie album from 1983. I didn't find anything really through the 70s. Then all of a sudden, 1983, Lionel Richie. This is one of the last reel-to-reel -reel pre recorded albums you can get. Look how much tape is on that. That's a three and three quarter inch per second album. And that is a seven and a half inch per second album. You can see twice the amount of tape. So you can imagine it would cost more to reproduce one of those seven and a half inches per second ones. And that's probably why there's less of them around. Now what I'm doing here is spooling up the Lionel Richie album on this machine just to show you what a ridiculously long-winded and complicated process it is playing a pre-recorded reel-to-reel album.
not the kind of thing that you really want to do. What you have to do is set it all up like this and then press the buttons to say that it's running at three and three quarter inches per second and then it's a small reel and then press play and you're off and running. So that's it. It took a lot longer than that, I sped that up, but then you can listen to your album, uh, but only one side of it of course, once it gets up to the end of that side, which in this case is 20 minutes later, that's the end of it. Now if I had each way play, I'd be able to play it back the other way and put it back on that first reel. But this machine doesn't have that, so what I have to do, get to the end of that first side, and then swap the reels over on the machine. So the one I've just put the tape onto has to go on the left, the uh, one that the tape should go back on goes on the right, but I've got to flip it over, and then I've got to put the tape back into the machine again. So you can see, playing a pre-recorded album or one of these isn't really a fun process. The real reason I got this, as I mentioned, is because I think it looks cool, but I don't think it looks cool playing these things. I think those look pretty ugly. What you really want is your nice big 10 inch, 10 and a half inch reels like this, full of something you've recorded yourself, and then you can play it for quite a lot longer uh, than that 20 minutes aside, and it just looks really nice as well. But remember, if you do want to get hold of a reel to reel machine after watching this, Make sure you've got very deep pockets and a decent bank account because you'll need it because one of these things will bleed you dry. Although it, if you can afford it, it's an absolutely gorgeous piece of technology to have in your house. Anyway, that's it for the moment. Thanks for watching.